There's a guy walking down the beach and there are thousands and thousands of starfish washed up on this beach. And the guy's walking on the beach and he's picking up a starfish and he's throwing it back in the water. And he's walking along and he's picking up another one and throwing it back in the water. And a passerby says to him, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm saving the starfish. And he says, well, look around me. There's thousands and thousands of starfish on the beach. You ain't gonna make a difference. So the man picks up another starfish and he throws it back in the water. And he said, I'll make a difference to that one water. serves you mate and that's that you know everything that's been happening it's obviously it's not serving you you know it's, it's it's detrimental to you your character to your life to your personality to your relationships with other people it's all negative and all detrimental you know so let's get a grip of it let's get a grip of it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what's happened you know what i mean it's what you do going forward okay right so we need to come up with a plan if you want to start a course um, um, with the foundation, then we need to come up with a plan. Now, the issue uh, with the foundation as it stands now is we're not funded by anyone. So all the, all the, all the money I've raised um, through boxing or fundraising, whatever it is, is, you know, we're surviving on that. Get some, when you go back to the hostel tonight, get some, um, they'll, they'll give you some pen and paper, you know what I mean? And get it written down and write down the different directions of what you actually want. And be honest with yourself, be, aut be authentic and honest with yourself. What do you want? You know, where do you want to be? Do you want this life up north? Do you want to be away from your family? Do you want this, you know, the fresh start? Do you want this career in barbering? Um, do you want to stay in London? Do you want to rebuild um, your life there with your trade you've got now? You know, um, get it all down on paper, that really helps. So I, I always wanted to be a business owner from the age of 11 when I got my first job in a chip shop. I, 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 the owner of that shop was the first positive male role model that I had. And, and he, you know, he had this business, he had a nice car, he had his house. Um, he was a nice person, he conducted, conducted himself very well, which I wasn't used to with males around me at that point in my life. So <clears throat> I made the decision then I wanted to be like him wanted to be a business owner, but from where I was, it was very, very difficult to get there. I had to climb a long way. So <clears throat> I joined the army and um, that was the first um, point in my life where, where I really gained some self-worth and, and, and respected myself and, and achieved things. And then leaving the army, you don't have that same sense of self-worth. You don't get the same respect from people because the skills are not transferable into the civilian world. So <clears throat> my life really took a, a, a nosedive after the downward spiral after the forces. I went from job to job and I went from being this proud soldier who drove tanks and gun tanks to working in a carpet shop um, where I was spoken to with no respect whatsoever. So um, I, I, I flayed about, went to job to job to job and eventually you know, I found Barbary. I rented a chair and a shop and progressed my skills. And I always wanted to learn more. I always wanted to learn the short fades. At, at that point, um, in this country, fades weren't big, they were big in America. And it was just starting in this country. But I, thought, I liked it, you know, and I wanted to perfect that skill. I wanted to perfect patterns and designs in people's heads. So I worked very hard on those skills and, and saved and saved and saved and saved. 
until I had enough to get a business. To think that I could be a business owner. You know, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it, but I had the money and the skill to do it. I just had to take the action. So I looked for a shop and I found a unit in sale. And um, that's where we started. Got my first member of staff and my second member of staff. And uh, I started to have a bit of time off. So the first year, I didn't have a day off. And, and I couldn't um, think much because I was working so much. I was just work, work, work. His goal back then was to eventually just open his own barbershop, start his own business. Um, and as I watched him do that and achieve everything that he set out to achieve, he um, he just wasn't fulfilled by it. You know, he was he was proud of what he had achieved, but the, he, I think there was just something inside him that was telling him all along that there was there was something more that he was he was meant to do. So I took a lot of time, or you know, took a lot of time to think about that because it was. I, I suppose I expected some kind of party at the end. You know, you achieve your dream and then, oh, well, that's it, you made it. But it didn't feel like that and I couldn't understand why. So I really looked in and, and, and searched for those answers. Why am I not happy? Why am I not fulfilled? There's something missing. So I took myself off to the Lake District and, and I camped and, and I got away from the noise. And, and just in that solitude, I decided that um, I was going to help our homeless community. At that time in Manchester, it was it was getting really it was getting worse than we'd ever seen it. You know, and I didn't like it. I, I, it was, I found it painful to see to see so many people in, in your own city um, sleeping on the streets, being homeless and suffering. You know, and, and I felt their suffering, so I really wanted to do something about that. And um, I believe that the, the, the ways that I've suffered in life uh, allows me to appreciate other people's suffering. I don't see a drug addict, you know, I don't see an alcoholic, I see a human being who's having a hard time. So first, we invited uh, guys into the shop. We put an advert out on our social media. We said if you're homeless or if you're unemployed and you've got a job interview, so you're showing a bit of willing to help yourself, uh, you can come in, we'll tidy you up, we'll give you products and good luck. The first guy who ever came in, he lived in a tent for two years and he told us about his life and how he'd ended up in a tent and, and um, what went wrong and how he looked after himself, what he did day to day. And, uh, and I shared stories with him and it was just a, it was just a great, um, encounter, a really human encounter and, and, a, and a, a wonderful connection um, and it moved me and that void that I felt as this business owner started to fill and it was the first time I felt that fill and then I understood what was missing in my life was fulfillment. So uh, it was clear I had to contribute and I wanted more of it, I wanted to contribute more because it fills me up. And I think that encounter was great for him. He was going through a really tough time and, and having his hair done and having a conversation and having a coffee and being in the warm for a bit and having some human connection. It was great for him, but actually that did more for me. And, and I, it, it really, really filled me up. So it's a win-win. It makes me feel better, it makes him feel better, then <laughs> let's do more of it. So. That's where it started, and, and, and I then decided to take it out onto the streets. This is all going here. All that, mate. So these are drinks for our friends who um, might not be too good on food. So, so these they give to cancer patients when they're on chemotherapy, and people can't eat. You know, so this is is, is high energy drinks um, for some of the, some of our guys who um, have got severe drug issues. Uh, eating can be an issue, so this is a nice solution to to give them the nutrients that they need and, and uh, energy boost. This is how I made them seats, you know, them tire seats. Support us, the brown blush. 
Yeah, and they send us shower gels and, and soaps and stuff to, to give to the guys. So that's, that's really cool. Obviously, for the ladies on the street, um, sanctuary towels. You only achieve so much on your own. You know, you need people to help you. I go, I've only got a certain skill set. So, when that runs out, where do I go? When we need to do things that I can't do, where do we go? So everybody needs a tribe. Yeah, and a tribe of people who have got the same mindset, the same common goal, with different skills. The tribes are, are powerful. You can build your own tribe. People talk about building a tribe, building a tribe. And, and I think a lot of the time you go about it the wrong way. Yeah. You need a commonality. You need something that you all believe in. And something you can all work to, towards. Something you can all go at and chip away at. So I, I can do a lot, but I can only do so much. <laughs> but with a tribe, you can do more. There are all different kinds of tribes. Good tribes, bad tribes. But for, for, for I think for one to understand their own tribe, um, real knows real. When you know, you know. You know, it's a feeling. You just know it's comfort. You're the same. You get it. You talk about your cause, and you get it just like that. It's very difficult to do things completely on your own and I think we talk about creating ripples um, of effect around us so it's as a business we also talk about purposeful relationships um, I think that's particularly strong in Manchester we're a very very strong community so kind of fitting that Jed's School Fades um, foundation movement is starting in Manchester there are people in the city in particular who feel very deeply and passionately about the issue that they have so many people um, find themselves homeless in the city. I came onto the street and these, these people were telling me this story about how the bedroom tax had affected them in the way that they were now having to pay for this bedroom tax, they were having to pay for this money, um, and that contributed to them, the, the, to them not being able to afford to live, and then one thing after another they ended up on the street, and it just made me go, oh my God, my views have contributed to that happening on the street, like how, how have I allowed my mindset to be that way, and it just opened up a whole new way of looking at things and understanding that that is such like a selfish kind of view and perspective to have so yeah I think like doing this completely changed my life and the way of seeing things from other people's point of view. We have a, a myriad of amazing people that help um, we have pharmacists that come out we have doctors that come out we have a vet that comes out looks after the dogs on the street we have an addiction coach that was people with their addiction we have the general volunteers who carry and hand stuff out. And we have this team of amazing barbers and hairdressers. And um, it's cool, a chiropodist, you know, we have from time to time. So um, it's great to see other people using their gift um, to help these people. You know, I can cut hair, but I'm not a doctor. You know, when we take a doctor out and you see the doctor get to work with someone, it's great, it's great you're doing what we're doing and, it's, and we're all just using our skills to help these people and we'd say to people you know you're hungry and that was the first point of contact are you hungry and I'd most of the time say yeah so okay i've got some food and then, and then explain well i'm a barber and um you know i'd love to cut your hair if 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 you were like that you know and at first people weren't sure they didn't know us then it was very new and 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 trust is a big thing in the homeless community it's it's a, it's a tough nut to crack where trust is concerned so at that point, we didn't have the trust of the homeless community. They were like, well, what do you want? You know, I could deal with a haircut, but what do you want? You know, we don't want anything. We just, we just want to you know, use our skill to, to help. So it was very, very simple and basic in the beginning. It was just a bit of food, a bit of warm kit, and, and a haircut. And, we, and I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to help. You know, I just, I just, all I knew how to do was cut hair.
obviously you've got shoppers coming by and they're watching what Jed and his team are doing. And the message that's been sent, you know, homeless people aren't other people, different from us. It could be any of us who ends up in those doorways. And it's almost like the process of getting your arms back around them and looking after them. And that just sends quite a powerful message, I think, to, to the people who are here in the city. Not accepting that we'll walk past people on the streets. We don't want to ignore those people. Those people can be our brothers, our sisters, our mums. And that's, I think, really Jed um, and Vincent and Andy have really started to make the city think about it. As this work progressed, the stories that came out when you when when you, you're cutting somebody's hair, um, I, I began to think sometimes I'm not I'm not qualified to deal with this. So that's where I started to really learn and learn how to help uh, people with trauma. I self-educated night after night after night, um, book after book after book, and and and. Most of it, most most of the stuff I've learned about is, is, is personal development. I think particularly with um, the kind of guys that, that Jed works with, mindset is everything, absolutely everything. You know, people who are coming from, from dark places, people who've had a really kind of raw deal in life and, and feel defeated in a way, I suppose. So it's, it's first of all, building that mindset and instilling the, you know, not so much the motivation, but I suppose more the, the actual belief that they can actually achieve more in life. I have to approach everything from a position of strength and, and in, in that moment with that person if I'm not strong I'm not good to that person you know I have to make myself strong first that's why I have my morning routine that's why I meditate in the morning get myself into the right mindset because if I go and engage in conversation um, to do with somebody's personal trauma and I'm not in a good place it deeply affects me I feel that pain you know I'm somebody who suffered and I recognise suffering in others. I, I see it and I feel it. So I have little techniques that I have to use to protect myself. Everything has to be done from a position of strength. If I connect with that person through the pain and I go to that dark place with them, and my physiology changes and I start to cry and I start to you know, um, feel sorry for them as much as they're feeling sorry for themselves, it's actually detrimental to connect on that level. If I can do it, anybody can. There's nothing special about me. Nothing. I'm, I'm you know, just a kid. I'm the same kid that, that grew up with nothing. I'm that same kid. But I've consciously decided to construct something better. We don't have to accept what we're born into. We don't have to accept the cards that we're dealt. We can decide. We can decide to change whatever it is we've been dealt. And consciously, 
and get out of our heads. The worst place we can be is in our heads. If you get in your head, you're dead. And we get outside of our heads and start to think of ways we can, we can contribute to, to this experience. You know, what is, what's it all about? You know, we have to contribute. And, and we get out of our heads and understand uh, and consciously look for ways we can, we, 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 can, we can contribute to others. I think everything changes. Everything changes. So our emotions are like muscles. You know, whatever you use gets stronger. If, if you're down all the time and you're depressed all the time, that's like a muscle. So sad people get more sad. Depressed people get more depressed. And, and everybody can see that happy people get more happy because that's what you're training. When you go to the gym and you just train your biceps, you're gonna get huge biceps. If you're, if you're training yourself, you, you, you're um, changing your mindset and your thought processes and, and creating new neuro neurological pathways, um, wiring yourself for happiness, you're gonna get more happy. Now I want you to sit forward. Elbows on your knees. <laughs> and put your heads down. Now I want you to remember the most traumatic event that has happened to you. Really think about it. How did you feel then? Remember the pain and what it took to pull yourself out. Now everybody stand up. Now I want you all to stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Shoulders back, chest out and your chin up. Now in this proud, strong position, I want you to remember your greatest achievement. Maybe this was the birth of your child, falling in love and getting married. Starting a business, getting a promotion, whatever it was, feel it. Live it like you're there. Remember the joy and the happiness this brought to us. Did you feel strong? Did you feel like you? I believe when we connect with this state, we can do anything. Now open your eyes and sit down. State, state is everything. If you're in the bad, if you're in a bad state, you're more likely to fail. You know, human beings in a bad state make bad decisions, and that sometimes violate who, it violates who they really are. When human beings are in a good state, we think completely differently, and and we can make better decisions, more in line with our true selves, more in line with who we really are. It opens up doors. It allows us to engage. It's, it's more likely for somebody to take a referral from a good state. If you walk over to a guy who's on heroin, for example, and he's sat in a doorway, he's got nothing going for him, and his head's down, his shoulders down, and he's thinking about his loved ones that have passed away, and he's thinking about how bad his situation is, how his hygiene's gone to, gone to pot, and how he's struggling with his life. If you go over and say to that guy, let's get you onto a drug program, he will tell you to piss off. Fact. He won't want to know. He will not want to know in that state. But you change his physiology changes emotional state is more likely to accept help. You treat him like the human being he is, using physiology to, to do that, pulling his shoulders back, lifting his chin, removing, removing the hair that's, that's long over your cut, cleaning off the dirt, the positive team that surrounds each person, affecting that person in the chair. The whole physiology and emotional state changes and that is fundamental to change the circumstances. I think everybody feels a sense of shame that we are a supposedly enlightened um, country um, and yet we've got this problem that doesn't seem to be going away and I think as a, as a community we all feel that we need to do something about it. For every person that you walk, you walk past that you can't help or you can't speak to then I think that's a deep feeling of regret and it's emotionally very difficult to deal with and if you live and work in Manchester you, this is not an odd occurrence, this is something you walk past hundreds of people every day. Unless you get that mindset side of things right, it's just not going to work and you're not going to, you're not going to really achieve any kind of real goal. So the, the first point of call is always to work on the mindset and work on re 
reason why we want to achieve whatever goal we want to achieve. Step into the barber's chair is one to step on the ladder back to where you would be want to be. It's the process of that change you see in somebody as they're working, cutting them, talking to them, building them up. That is where we get success. That's where somebody will say, okay, well, I'm going to do something. They're in this good state. At the end of the haircut, they're a human being in a good state, a positive state, capable of making real and lasting change. And they will take a referral at that point. Not everybody, but guys will take a referral at that point. And so many guys now over the years, you know, we've put them in this, in this, in this positive state. And I've said, yes, right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to the mustard tree. I'm going to go be there at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to go and engage with Barnabas. I'm going to go and engage with any of these, these, these big homeless charities that do great, great work. I know if enough people just open their eyes and wake up to the fact we can all do something. You know, all of us can do something. And it take, it's going to take a collective effort. You know, everybody from every area of society, businesses, charities, governing bodies and the general public, if we all get our heads together and pull in the same direction, it goes away. Well, there are a lot of people who are stuck in the old way of thinking and the old way of doing things and the old mindset of you'll never change it. You cannot change homelessness when your mindset is it'll, ne it'll never change. I've worked in the sector for 20 years, it'll never change. If you, I, I always say, you give me 20 years, I'll solve it. Give me 20 years and I will solve it. Foundation is contributing to ending rough sleeping. And I know it can be done. If we all contribute together, businesses, charities, governing bodies, and the general public, if we all pull in the same direction, we can look back one day and say, remember when we used to have people living on our streets? This is my dream, that we used to have people living on our streets. In 2005, I visited a town in Alberta, Canada, and I spoke to rough sleepers there. That same town now has 0% homeless population.
It's a rocky road, when will it stabilize? I wanna know I'm waiting till the day arrives Stay inside, turn the TV off, be quiet, maybe hide Bailiff's knocking on, I don't know how I'm gonna pay the guy Sack and find a notice through the door, I'm trying to change the minds Gas has been cut off, man, I've been bathing at my mates for time Sleeping fully clothed, through the cold, lie awake at night We're hungry, money's running low I'm at the stage where I am shedding weight and feel like Surely I paid the price Me and my bro, so broke, I'm finna taste the pride Slowly going down our throats, choke but we stay alive Sell a little smoke, so we see another day survive Neighbors try to complain and say we're criminals, we ain't the type Staring at us through a cloud lens, not with a naked eye We just lost our family home, think of my favorite times Man, how much more can they take from my hell?